Hey everybody, welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We've got another Transformers review coming your way. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Deluxe Class Decepticon Shrapnel. So as we always do, let's go ahead and start with that packaging. Up top, you have your QR code, you have your tech specs, you have parents, there's your big gape and hole. There's your artwork on the front, looking good in his alt mode. He is a Deluxe Class. Over here on the side, you have all that artwork we've become accustomed to. Back here, you have your product shots, and you can see the Evo Fusion with the weapons. He converts in 11 steps. And then you have all your information down here. You have the sad baby. The baby is sad because the baby does not like insects. And over here, you have his face. And there he is in his bot mode. And down here, you have that information if you care to read it. And that is it for the box. Let's go ahead and see what came with shrapnel. Behold, laid out here before you is everything that came inside that box. And we're gonna start over here with your little sheet of warnings and you get your instruction booklet and you are left with the three items that we see right here. So let's go ahead and start with these guns. Now these are identical, so we're only going to pay attention to one of them and this is our volunteer. So this is one of his two pistols that he has and yeah, they're purple and they've got some blast effect compatibility but there's not much else to write home about here the, a lot of hollow areas not much going on as far as details or sculpt work uh, but you can combine them and you can do different things with them so they're not the worst thing ever but uh yeah there, there they are all right and here we go let's go ahead and talk about the big guy this is his main rifle so this is a callback to that original g1 figure for sure and details pretty good you do have blast effect compatibility so right there on that tip and you can see that it is molded in purple painted with silver the paint does look nice it looks like it was applied well so no complaints there you've got a couple of ports up underneath and you've got a port here in the back for that evil fusion or for blast effects whatever you want to use them for all right so that's it for the accessories let's go ahead and get shrapnel and bring him in for his close-up here he is, that ravenous little Insecticon we've been waiting to see. This is Shrapnel. So let's go ahead and bring him in and take a look at this guy. Normally I would start with the head, but we're going to start with his antenna, whatever you want to call them, in his bot mode. So you can see that they are just molded gray plastic. Not a lot of detail on them, but they get the job done for sure. It definitely looks like a Shrapnel. So coming on down to his head, face sculpt looks really nice. Not much else to say about it very glossy paint uh, that's also a point of contention for me because it's it's really thick coats of paint so uh, trying to move this head uh, i think there's a lot of paint interference there that really becomes a pain in the butt uh, coming on down to the chest uh, chest looks good uh, i do lament that unlike the original g1 figures this little yellow area on the g1s you used to be able to open them up so you could put like a little mini diaclone style figure in there uh, you can't do that with these this is just a fixed fixed piece in there but that yellow translucence looks really good it almost looks like he has a six pack under there and then you've got that decepticon logo right on top details all up in his chest and then coming on down looking at that crotch and upper legs not a lot to talk about here but it looks good and taking a look at the insides of those legs you can see everything comes together pretty well so no real hollow areas down here in the legs at all so that is uh, very much appreciated really the only hollow areas that you're going to see is just on the insides of those forearms and then coming on down to those painted feet so you got those yellows and those purples let's lift this arm out of the way take a look at the side here so at, overall uh before I, I get into the details just take a look at how thin that guy is not really any backpack to speak of so uh, he's not going to be top heavy. He's not going to be too bulky on you. So I do appreciate all that. And taking a look at that leg, you got a little bit of paint here, which we'll see more in his insect mode. Just the least bit of sculpt work right there. And then up underneath, you can see that he is solid all the way through. Uh, you don't have much of a filler in the underarm right here. And then right here in these forearms, this is that big hollow area that I was speaking about. Everything else looks pretty good. So a little bit of detail there, a little bit of detail there. Taking a look at the back of the figure. He looks pretty good, even from back here. The only thing you can really say is there's a lot of screws 
and you do have these minor hollows back here, but they don't bother me at all. I mean, I think they blend in pretty well. You got a little bit of ribbing in there to kind of help camouflage that. So uh, no complaints for a deluxe class price point here at all. Uh, if you want to get picky, you can talk about these hollow points, uh, hollow areas on the underside of the antenna, but especially when it comes to insect mode, you're never going to see this. So I'm not worried about it at all, but you can see there's a little bit of detail here on those legs. We'll see that in the insect mode as well. But yeah, I think for a deluxe class figure, this guy's done really well. He looks good. Uh, the paint is super glossy, way glossier than what we got with the legacy kickback. So yeah, I think he looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and jump into the articulation. And normally, just like with the details, we would start with the head, but I'm going to start with the antenna up here because you do have the ability to move those a little bit. You can bring them down a little bit further if you want to. Kind of changes his moods, bring them up. Of course, bring them all the way to the home position for the insect mode if you want to do something like that. You know, you, you can if you want to have one up, one down. I don't know why. Which way did they go? Oh, they went that way. I don't know. Do something like that if you want to. And then coming down near to the head, uh, uh, there's, there's not much you can do here. The, the head is very tight. There is no up or down. There is no side to side tilt. You can turn the head 360, but between the limited space right here to get your finger in and the incredibly tight connection, because I'm thinking it's because of these multiple layers of glossy paint, but man, this is a really tight head. But yeah, you can turn it around if you want to, just no up and down and no tilt. Coming over here to the arms, you're going to bring the arms out that far. You can go all the way around at that shoulder. At the elbow, you can get just over 90 degrees, and then you have bicep rotation. And then for the wrists, you can tilt those wrists in, primarily due to transformation, but this also helps if you want him holding his long rifle, that long rifle view. And then coming down here to the waist, you do have a waist rotation. Again, incredibly tight on this copy. So uh, I guess I shouldn't be complaining about tight joints. So coming on down to the legs, you can, again, very tight joints. You can get way beyond a full split. I'm going to call that a shrapnel Van Dam, just because it sounds fun. And you can do thigh rotation all the way around. Forward kick goes that far. Back kick goes that far. And then on the knees, right at 90, maybe just a bit over. And then down here at the feet, uh, it's not a lot. Uh, you can get a little bit of down and you can get a little bit of up. It's really hard to show. There is a few degrees. There we go. There you go. It was more than a little bit. You, uh, <laughs> I was stuck on, I was having an interference up there. So you can bring them down that far, but it's not really going to do you any good. And then up a little bit right there. And then with your ankle tilt, you can get about that much on the ankle tilt. So it's not a lot, but I mean, you can still get him in a pretty decent split position right there. Uh, additionally, not really an articulation point, but just emphasizing because of that backpack, uh, he's pretty stable as well. So posing, it's not the hardest thing with this guy. You can get him in some pretty good poses and he'll hold it pretty well. So let's go ahead and jump right into the accessories portion. I'm not going to do a separate segment here with the turntable or anything. We'll, we'll take a look at that when we get him into his insect mode. But uh, there's a few things that you can do here with this guy. So of course you have your main rifle and then you have your two smaller guns that you can use. So if you want, you have the ability, you can take and plug these guns up underneath his hands and do that on both sides. And you can have some nice underarm shooting going on, something like that. And then of course you could just take that main rifle and plug it in right there. And so that way you've got all kinds of armament action going if you want to do that. Uh, you can also just move that off to the side and, you know, plug these in his hands. I think you guys know where this is going. I don't, I don't think I need to provide a lesson on this. So, you know, you can do that with his guns as well. So a few different options that you could do. Uh, if you want to do them, then the other big thing is just going to be making that long rifle. So on the long rifle, you're just going to take these weapons. I'm just going to set you down right there just for the ease. You're going to take these. doesn't matter which gun you use. Plug one in the back and then take one right here and then plug it up underneath in this port. And then you have that long gun if you want to use it. And then it's just a matter of maneuvering those arms around. So you plug this gun in and then you 
reach over here and you find that one and plug this one in and do something like that you know obviously I could do much better but I'm trying not to waste your time in this review so I think you get the idea so you can get a nice long gun action going like that and then of course you can use blast effects so you know what whatever you want to visualize you know if he's it's a it's a no look shot to the side you know you could ooh, you could do something like that uh, of course all the tips of these have blast effect compatibility give me this thank you and then you do have the ability on the back of this one if you want you know, to have a big big boomer going i don't know how he's going to hold this but you can do it if you want and then you have of course blast effect compatibility all over the figure itself so you know you've got a spot up here you know he's flying you know he's uh, getting shot in the back uh, by Starscream back here, you know, so, ah, you know, doing one of those. And then you've got the spots underneath the arms. And let's see, yeah, a couple spots back here if you want to do something, if you want to celebrate it. You can probably plug some stuff in right here as well if you want to. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. But my favorite one by far is the fact that you have the Blast Effect compatibility on the tops of these antennas. So you can do this depending i mean these are just the ones i'm picking you can pick others if you want but yeah you can totally have that going on so that's really cool uh, i like having this option we'll see that again in the insect mode as well so yeah there you go uh, details are pretty good articulation is well above average except for that head and you have all kinds of blast effect compatibility and fun that you can have with those accessories so you do have some options there so now that we've covered all that let's go ahead and get into the transformation and get him into his bug mode so the first thing that you're going to want to do to get him into his alt mode is go ahead and collapse these hands in either one of those forearms right there. Come down here to the feet and just push those feet all the way down so they're like that. Come up here, you're going to hide that head. You're just going to take these pieces right here. You're just going to shove them down so you should have something like that. Get these arms up a little bit out of your way, and now you're going to rotate this waist 180 degrees on that very tight waist joint, or at least it is on mine. And straighten them out. And then once you have it right here, you're just going to open these panels up right here. So just give these a pull. Panels open up just like that. And then you're going to collapse these legs in on themselves, so it's a matter of just some shrinkage here. So going to try to get this on camera as best I can. Take these and you're going to fold that all the way in just like that. All right, so you should have something that looks like that. So over here from a different angle, maybe just this side, shrink them in, bring it forward just like that. And once you have it here, you're going to take these two. You've got tabs and slots in there. You're going to take them and you're going to line them up and give them a squeeze just like that and then you're going to drop these in like this you're going to feel a soft click so drop those in you've got a soft click and then you're all set right there you've already taken these hands and folded them in so now you've got tabs right there two slots right there you're going to line those up give those a push you get a nice gentle closure right there and then you're going to come back here take your legs the insect legs fold those out and then bring in the antenna and angle them however you choose. And there you have Shrapnel in his insect mode. I think for the most part he looks pretty good in this mode. It's a little weak in my opinion. Uh, it's a whole lot of really obvious folded up robot. So it doesn't feel like a huge evolutionary leap from the G1 figure. Uh, but it gets the job done. I mean he captures the essence of Shrapnel. And I, I guess I don't really have any issues with him. But let's go ahead and bring him in and take a look at his details in this mode. And we'll start with those antenna, which we saw in the bot mode. But this is that new configuration. And then you can see you've got that folded up area right there that's hiding his face. Kind of looks like a, I guess, a face squint. Maybe looks like a beetle head or mouth appendages down there, maybe. And then, of course, there's that chest that we saw before. Then you've got the legs all folded up. And you can see from the side here what they've done with the arms. So you do have these two little uh, support struts back here on either side to help keep him balanced. Uh, and then these legs do a pretty good job here. Nothing 
Really incredible though. Coming around to the back, you can see how everything folds up there. Again, doesn't look too bad. Not my favorite, but he's all right. I do like the paint. There he is from the other side. There he is from the top. And here he is from the bottom. So the robot does, to an extent, disappear unless you really know what you're looking for. Obviously these are arms, legs, head, that kind of stuff. So he's just doing an extreme yoga pose, but it gets in there. And I think overall, at least for me, it works. Uh, so let's go ahead and what we'll do is uh, I'll uh, bring the turntable in. We'll throw some uh, blast effects on this guy, put his accessories on him in the format as directed per the instructions. Of course, you can do whatever you want to do, uh, limited only by your imagination. And then we'll throw some blast effects on this guy and uh, we'll have a little bit of fun. Well, here we have Shrapnel in his insect mode with all the blast effects completely utilized and with the weapons in the placement as per the instructions. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not the biggest fan of this. Uh, I think there's a better configuration, which I will show you momentarily, but for now, let's just go ahead and soak this in. So you've got blast effect ports up here, up here, down here on those weapons. Of course, right in the front of the antenna. Love having that blast effect compatibility there. And of course, on the tip here. And then you've got one on the back. I just didn't have enough room to put a blast effect. Uh, we, I would have had some blast effect interference going on back there, so I had to pick one and just roll with it. So you can see you can do some pretty cool things with the figure uh, in this mode. I don't like the guns down here slung under the arms. Uh, it's not my favorite. So I'm going to do a real quick configuration change here. And I'm going to show you what I like. And ultimately, it's going to be your figure. So it's up to you what you want to do with it. But I'm just throwing some ideas out there and just uh, pointing out that, that this isn't my favorite configuration, I suppose. So uh, let's go ahead and get this guy swapped around and I'll show you what I like. Well, it may not seem like that big of a difference to anyone else, but this is my preferred configuration. So I've taken those guns, they were slung under the arms here, and I've put them up top. And then for the main gun that was just sitting up here in an asymmetrical fashion, I've taken it and I've used the port uh, that's right in the center of the figure on the underside. So now he's got that gun underneath, and he's just got a whole lot of nice firepower uh, shooting forward. And there's some symmetry here, which uh, makes me happier you know to that effect i uh, don't get to use these ports on the underside of the guns uh, just because you know what are you what are you going to do with something like that you can't really fit anything under there so you do lose a little bit of that blast effect compatibility if you really wanted this guy being shot up but this is my preferred method so take it for what you will uh, do it the way the instructions say do it this way do it whichever way you feel is uh your makes you happy so uh, with that let's go ahead and jump into the comparisons now and we'll see how he looks compared to some other figures just a couple of notes before we get started on comparisons here first note is uh, for the purposes of illustration I've just taken his uh, weapons and I have put them back in the positions that were recommended in the instructions just to try to keep consistency there from an apples to apples standpoint second thing is I can't find my G1 shrapnel anywhere so i'm a little frustrated right now i don't know uh, where i put him but i have the other two g1 insecticons so we're going to use those as comparisons so starting off here this is my g1 kickback moving on to our next comparison this is g1 bombshell for a fellow transformers legacy comparison this is the legacy tarantulas and for our final alt mode comparison, this is the Legacy Insecticon Kickback. So we now have two of the three Insecticons uh, through this generation. That's it for alt mode comparisons. Let's get Shrapnel transformed back into his bot mode and do some comparisons there. First things first, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and take those weapons off of Shrapnel and just set those off to the side. So just take that, put that over there. Take this, put that over there, take this, and put that over there. So now, you, now that you have all the weapons off, now we can start taking this guy apart. Go ahead and close those legs up right now. Open the antenna up, and then come down here to the arms. Just give these arms a gentle pull. And while you're down here, you can take those fists. You've got little tabs in there that you can get with your fingernail, and bring those hands out. And then same thing over here, 
Just pull that out and get that hand out of your way. I'm just going to take these arms up right there just so they're out of my way. And then come back here to the rear part of the figure and then just give this a pull. You'll feel that soft click where it separates and then pull the legs apart right there. And now we're just going to de-collapse them or expand them, I guess would be the right word. So you're just going to grab right here and pull all this apart and give that a little push and just put that leg. You'll feel a soft click right there and you'll put that leg where it belongs. Close that panel up, soft snap right there and lift that foot up. Do the same thing over here, so grab that, bring it on down, push it into place, soft click, push this piece down, and bring that foot up. And now you're going to turn this waist around, so nice tight joint, and get his legs arranged, bring those arms down, and then the last step you have is just opening these up to ex so expose his face, so just get your thumbnail or fingernail up there underneath those and pull those up that one's nice and tight all right and that is it now you have shrapnel back in his bot mode for our first bot mode comparison here we see legacy shrapnel next to g1 insecticon kickback moving right along to our next comparison this is the g1 insecticon bombshell for a fellow Transformers Legacy comparison, this is the Legacy Tarantulas. And yeah, I know that Shrapnel is an insect and Tarantulas is an arachnid, but they're both arthropods, so it works for me. And last but not least, this is the Transformers Legacy Insecticon kickback. And yeah, the team is coming together and looking really darn good. I'm looking forward to seeing the bombshell uh, third figure whenever he comes out. But yeah, these two look absolutely great together. That's it for comparisons. Let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts. So there we have the Transformers Legacy Deluxe Class Shrapnel. And I gotta tell you, I think that this is a pretty good figure. I do very much like this offering. So uh, I, he's not perfect, not by any means, but I think he hits a lot of marks really well. Let's go ahead and get into it, and we'll start with the overall looks. Uh, the aesthetics of the figure, his bot mode, again, emphasizing that this is uh, all passing judgment on a deluxe class figure. His bot mode looks really darn good. What a great shelf presence. That glossy paint looks good. Uh, just the overall shape of the bot mode, uh, the proportions, I think, work really well. So uh, really on point as far as bot mode looks good or as far as bot mode, bot mode looks. Uh, I do think that to a certain extent we were kind of shorted on the antenna uh, with this gray plastic right here and it very well may be due to the fact that I'm used to having chrome on my Insecticons so that could be part of it. I openly admit that but I feel like that was kind of a missed mark on there. Uh, he does have a couple of hollow areas, very minor, just inside those forearms and then on the backs of those legs. Um, and his alt mode is okay. You know, uh, he's not the most convincing Insecticon alt mode I think I've ever seen, but he gets the job done. I'm just not overly excited about bot mode is definitely my favorite here. So I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 for overall looks, uh, really, really for that bot mode as well. Moving on to the articulation. It's pretty good everywhere except for a few areas. So you've got nothing in that head except for the ability to turn the head left and right. You don't have any up or down. You don't have any tilt side to side, anything like that. So you get left and right rotation and that's about it. So in a pose like this, it would have been really nice to have the ability for him to be looking up just a bit. So uh, that's kind of a disappointment there. Uh, also, he has no wrist rotation. It's not the worst thing we've ever seen. I mean, you can get around it, but wrist rotation is something I think we've all become accustomed to. And he has slightly limited feet. So he's got a few degrees in the ankle tilt and you can tilt the feet down, but you can't really tilt the feet up. So that's going to give you some difficulty in posing as well. But like I say, everything else is pretty good and what we've come to expect, uh, especially at this price point. So I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 for articulation. Moving on to the accessories. So I will start off by saying, hey, for a deluxe class, we get three guns. That's pretty good. You know, that's not something that we see too often. So uh, certainly... Uh, happy about that. Uh, also the fact that they have blast effect compatibility 
and then if you want to get into the evolution gimmick which I'm showcasing here basically you just combine the guns together to make a big gun or a long rifle then you can do something along those lines as well the the purple guns look cheap they're just it's obvious that they were trying to save plastic with all those hollow areas it doesn't look good they're not just hollow on one side they're hollow on both so that's a bit of a bummer however his silver rifle looks really good uh, it definitely captures that G1 look, so that makes me happy. The purple guns don't make me quite as happy, but I think overall, for the first time seeing these weapons, getting three uh, accessories in a deluxe class, it's pretty good, so I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 there. Moving on to our quality. You know, this figure has hardly any issues whatsoever. The only issue that I have, and this is going to sound so strange, is that head is so hard to turn it's a combination of trying to get your fingers in there between the antenna and between you know these two things right here uh, to get the ability to torque on that head but also i think that glossy paint that they used i think they put so many coats on that it there's a lot of friction there just simply a lot of friction so uh, i guess it, it's a quality issue it does detract a little bit from playing with the figure and trying to pose the figure but everything else is great it came with everything that he was supposed to every joint is nice and tight this guy tabs in the way he's supposed to sculpt work looks good all the other paint applications look good so i'm going to give him a nine out of ten for overall quality so coming to our last bullet which is overall value uh, i will tell you that this was a pre-order that i picked up from big bad toy store online and that was 25 us dollars so I do believe that that is a few dollars above the typical MSRP that you would see for this figure. So uh, my value is going to be slightly different, hopefully, than your value unless you bought him online as well. But if you can find him in stores for MSRP, even better. So I'm going to give overall value on this figure an 8 out of 10. I think the value is certainly there. He's really fun to play with. Transformation's easy and fun. And you can do a lot with those accessories. And he looks absolutely fantastic on your shelf. So... If you can find him for less than $25, do it. Uh, but I think even at that price point, I think he's worth it. I think he's fun. All right, so that brings us to our grand total out of a possible 50 points. Legacy Shrapnel gets 41 out of 50. Uh, this guy didn't score below 8 on anything in any of these categories. So this guy's going to be an easy recommend for me. I think he is a blast. He's just fun to handle, fun to play with, fun to transform, looks good, and... I just don't think you're going to have any regrets picking him up. So I'm uh, certainly going to recommend this figure to you. So that's going to wrap up the review. I uh, hope you guys got some good information. I hope you got some entertainment out of it. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. Leave some comments if you want to. And one last favor, if you know of anyone who would like this channel or these videos, please feel free to share the channel or the videos with them. We love watching the channel grow. So with that, that's going to wrap it up. Until we see you guys in the next one, take care.